A Christian teacher has claimed he is being discriminated against as he faces a professional conduct hearing after misgendering a student. In 2017, Joshua Sutcliffe was suspended by and then left the, the Cherwell School in Oxford, where he taught after he told a group of students, well done girls, one of the students identified as a boy. The hearing is in regard to his time at the school and Sutcliffe could be prevented from teaching if the allegations against him are proved. He also said he had to leave another London school after calling Mohammed a false prophet on his personal YouTube channel. So today I'm asking, should a teacher's personal views matter? Now joining me is former Eton teacher and culture comment, cultural commentator Will Noland. Uh, Will Noland, another teacher who is known for having uh, very strong personal views on YouTube. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, tell us a little bit about your story, if you can summarise it into 30 seconds or so. Well, I was asked to give a lecture on the topic of identity, and I spoke about toxic masculinity and how actually it's not toxic when viewed from the point of view of biology and how women have valued these very traits in men for years. This caused offense and I was asked to take the video down off YouTube despite a disclaimer and I felt this infringed upon my freedom of speech. Right, so th this sounds very much like what's happened to Sutcliffe at his London school. It sounds very common amongst the teaching community now. Would you say there is a groupthink mentality or an echo chamber in education? Yes, certainly. I think there's this idea that what we are supposed to have is neutrality in teachers, but the way that's actually put out in practice is that only certain viewpoints are allowed to be held by teachers, and yet teachers don't know what these viewpoints are. It's not put in black and white, so that they find themselves walking over an invisible tripwire, and they need to be told with great clarity what the views they're expected to hold are, but they don't know. That's interesting that we don't know what the views are, but we know what the views aren't because Sutcliffe says his teaching record was stellar and that he's being persecuted for his Christian views. That sounds very similar to me. Yes, I think this is certainly one of the tripwires. And to the extent that he's been described as misgendering a student, mm. what you can see there is that the idea that a transgender person is a real thing has been assumed in the phrasing of the accusation. But really, there are just men, for example, who might mistakenly identify as women. Now, the way it's been set up assumes that he's supposed to agree with the whole idea of transgender being legitimate. But surely this should be one of the things that is open for discussion and that a variety of perspectives are tolerated on, but clearly not. It should be, absolutely. It's, it's bizarre to me that someone can get... Um suspended for saying well done girls which is a compliment uh, it's encouraging good behavior however um, one of the girls identified as a boy which shows the school is going down the track of trans affirming and is that not the danger here that those schools are affirming one particular politically contested set of views and going against another because in contrast uh, the, the teacher Sutcliffe said on his personal youtube channel that Mohammed is a false prophet and now that was enough to get him suspended well if it's the, the personal view that's the problem, then surely a teacher saying that Muhammad is not a false prophet is also putting out a personal view and should be dismissed for that. So you can see not so much having a personal view as what particular view you have that's the problem. And here's where we get into very dangerous territory indeed, especially with the fact that teachers' social media is also being monitored and policed too. And we can see this with Jordan Peterson's recent problem regarding the fact that unless he submits to retraining, then he's not allowed to continuing practicing as a psychologist. And this isn't related to what he does in his professional career. It's about his own personal social media. Absolutely. I just want to clarify. Sorry, I got that wrong. He, didn't, he wasn't suspended for saying Mohammed was a false prophet. He left that school. He was suspended for saying, uh, well done, girls. But I, I still think both of these are very valid viewpoints. And I watched your video, actually. I watched your video on masculinity or toxic masculinity. I thought it was very fair and very balanced. But where can we go if teachers are afraid of, of voicing their opinions, even in private spaces such as YouTube and outside of school? Where can we go in education to make sure that both viewpoints are put across to students or to young people? In a way, I think it does 
draw more attention to the role of parents in education. Parents are always the primary educators, whether they are homeschooling or not. So parents who are feeling that their kids aren't being taught to think critically in a broad-based manner in schools need to take that duty very seriously. And it might mean accessing extra services like libraries, internet, books, etc., or just having good old-fashioned discussions around the dinner table so that the children hear the variety of perspectives they might not otherwise be encountering, lest the teachers fear a sacking. I'm with you, Will. I think at this point I recommend homeschooling far more than I recommend any schools in this country. A lot of them seem to be captured, unfortunately. We, we've got to take back control and reverse that long march through the institution. Anyway, thank you very much for joining us. That is Will Noland, former Eton teacher and cultural commentator. Uh, we reached out to both the Cherwell School and the Department of Education for a comment. Cherwell School said they were unable to comment at this time, and the DfE told us that they do not comment on individual cases.